Now here's a fast and easy way to get your game on with Jeff Bezos' flaming dongle, Amazon bargain TV doodad, the Fire TV Stick 4K. It's capable of so much more than just streaming video and music. You can actually game on this thing. I'm gonna take a look at the little sticker dreams and push it right to the breaking point. Let's go. So full disclosure, Amazon sent me this little Fire TV stick to review. Well, not actually to review, but they did send it to me in exchange for some money. It usually retails for about $49.99, but I got it on an Amazon Prime Day sale for about 20 quid. That's all it cost. Thanks, Amazon. Good trade. Yeah, I picked this up because I was looking for a little Android thingamabob to game on and take with me when I'm traveling. And I know there's like a million videos already about this, but I wanted to have a look myself. Give you my hot takes on the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K. Is that, is that what it's called? Yeah, a real life experience of getting it up and running and just seeing what you can put on it. And I'll show you how to do it and ultimately let you know if I think it's worth the asking price. But before I get into all of that, I'm gonna show you what it's like in action. What systems can we actually run? Unfortunately, I had to record this footage directly on my monitor because Amazon have locked down the HDCP copy protection thing pretty hard on this. So you can't even look at the menu or record the menu properly. And I don't have a Chinese splitter thing to get rid of the HDCP copy protection. I tried running it through my AV amp, it didn't work. So here we are. But I'll keep the FPS on screen to give you a good idea about what's happening and how it kind of performs. Right, let's start things off easy then with the NES. Yep, that's fine, that runs. Game Boy. Yeah, of course. And the Master System. Yeah, Sega Master System, absolutely fine. So that's 8-bit, kind of went easy on it there. How about 16? Mega Drive. Yeah, no sweat. SNES. It'll run Mario is missing, no problem. Yeah, at this point, I think we need to turn up the heat ever so slightly. So, Game Boy Advance? Yeah, actually runs fine. How about PS1? Also, it runs great, at least with Ridge Racer here. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Now we're cooking. All right, so how about N64? Yeah, I played Super Mario 64 and it runs pretty great, actually. He's on fire! Wow, 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 wow. Right, bring on the Dreamcast. Here we go. Okay, so this is where the excitement starts to cool off a little bit. I opted for Crazy Taxi. Not the most difficult game to emulate, but the Fire TV stick is really starting to struggle here. You're gonna wanna add two frame skips to bring that 60 frames per second down to around 20, or just go with maximum auto frame skip to even make it playable. But with that on, sure, you can play it. It's not ideal, but if you're desperate to get into some crazy taxi or sonic adventure, you can probably just about get away with it, but it isn't something I'd recommend. Okay, let's kill this thing off once and for all with the Saturn. Yeah. No Saturn cores, no performance tweaks could save this one. I think it's dead. I killed it. Oh wait, it's not quite over. It'll run Doom. Yeah, so a bit of a mixed bag there towards the end, but everything up to around PS1 and 64 is running pretty well actually. For a £20 dongle that you plug into the back of your telly, you could do a lot worse, that's for sure. You really shouldn't have too many issues with the 8 and 16-bit systems. And given the limited storage available on this thing, which I think is eight gigabytes total, with a good chunk of that used for the Amazon OS thing, Android thing. Yeah, there's not a lot left, but you could definitely get SNES, a lot of SNES games on there, the whole library. Uh, Mega Drive, NES, Mars System, Game Boy, you can throw all those on. Uh, good selection of Game Boy Advance, uh, a few N64 games and maybe even a PS1 game or two if you're lucky but yeah I mean for something you can take out and about I think it's pretty great actually I'll, I'll, I'll use that I'll take it away on holiday it'll be good I think get a little little Bluetooth gamepad 
yeah good times good times uh right so how do how do you actually set it up well it's dead easy let's take a look what i do is i just grabbed an xbox one controller set it to pairing dived into the fire tv settings and found remotes and bluetooth devices in there you just select add new game controller and after a few seconds it was discovered and i could connect boom done then you need to get retro arch retro arc arc arch i don't know whatever um i'm gonna stick with arch <laughs> Sound off in the comments if you think that's wrong. I don't know. Yeah, so to get RetroArch, I just went to find and search, type RetroArch, just installed it. Be sure to allow it to access the file system. And then when you load it up, it will install a few key packages and then it's ready to go. Well, pretty much. You'll need to do a couple of bits first. So your controller was paired, but uh, in my instance, it, it didn't recognize the face buttons, all the buttons really at all, apart from the joysticks and the D-pad, they were fine. Um, so you need to just dig into the menu a little bit, just set your controller up, set up all the buttons, configure the buttons. And then you'll also need to set up a hotkey to exit the game. So you just dig into the hotkeys, choose the one you want. Um, I use start and select as my like, shortcut to exit the game. And then just be sure to go in and save the configuration as well. So every time it loads up, it's got that button layout and it's got the uh, hotkey set up so you can exit the game and you're done. Next you want to install cores for the systems you want. I started off installing the Genesis Mega Drive core, Genesis Plus GX. It was easy enough from the main menu, just go to load core, select download a core and find Sega Genesis Plus GX or whatever other core you want. And then when you've installed that you're even closer to being able to play the games on it. Uh, you'll need to install a file manager to transfer the ROMs onto the Fire TV stick. So I found popular Android file manager ES File Explorer. That will allow us to drag and drop files to the Fire TV stick via FTP. So once you've installed ES File Explorer, go to the network tab on the left, open that up, scroll down to where it says view on PC, turn that on, Pop the FTP address into your favorite FTP program. And if it's all gone to plan, it should connect. You'll be able to easily transfer ROMs to and from the Fire TV. You don't need to overthink this too much. I just created a ROMs directory inside the RetroArch folder and just got on with it. And that's pretty much it. Just add the cores for the systems you want to run, put the ROMs on there and enjoy. So a pretty quick one today. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that's subscribed to the channel so far. I'm so thankful I managed to get over 350 subscribers already. I can't believe it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm working on something special for when I hit that magical 1,000 subscriber mark. Probably a giveaway of some sort. I've got a few ideas anyway. You're hot. I'm done.